The shipping industry needs to step up if we're to meet 2050 targets, and more urgently if we're not to exceed the planetary boundaries. Decarbonisation and the ESG compliance reporting has dominated recent narrative in shipping, but there's much more to be done on crew welfare, circularity, joining the dots across the value chain. Shipping is moving away from looking at the steel or the ship as its only asset, but the oceans as its asset. So oceans and biodiversity is a key focus for us going forwards. The Sustainable Shipping Initiative is a member-led organisation of high ambition industry actors across the value chain, uh, spreading from ship owners, operators, charters, ports and shipyards. In 2016, the SSI developed a roadmap for the industry's sustainability. This was updated in 2020 and currently we will focus on horizon scanning of the new and emerging issues coming to shipping. Our members are made up across the value chain and the discussions and discourse amongst them is to join ideas from across the other side of the table that might be shared, learned from and solutions found that are non-commercial. For SSI, partnering and collaborating with all actors in, in the landscape is essential. We launched our sort of clean shipping commitment uh, like strategic platform about two years ago now. And that's when we decided to not just look at reducing fuel and CO2 emissions and, and actually fully look at the impact of, of a clean hull. The impact from a carbon emissions perspective is, is vast. If it's 17.7% extra fuel required on average to propel a vessel through water with hull fouling, imagine if the global fleet fuel bill went up by 17.7%. That would have huge implications. Sustainable resourcing of crewing for ships is essential going forwards. Shipping will be competing for these essential resources with other industries going forwards. South 32 is a globally diversified mining and metal company, as well as a large charterer. As a member, you get to interact with a lot of other members from across the value chain. You feed those challenges back to SSI and then you discuss them as a group, in case other companies are also seeing the same type of challenges. One of the things we have done in, in SSI is we have developed this code of conduct, which essentially tries to improve the welfare of seafarers and uh, to treat them in a way that we would treat land-based employees. Partnering with the Royal College of Art has been essential in our current and future work on oceans and biodiversity. A lot of our work has been bridging this gap between technology and society. Last year we ran a challenge around the future of the oceans and this was the biggest postgraduate design project in the world, all focused around the future of the oceans on planet Earth. It's kind of like this sort of creative glue that brings together different groups of people to solve future challenges, especially challenges around climate. We're working with SSI to look at how design can bring new ideas to the future of uh, shipping. So thinking about things like the quality of life for seafarers, thinking about the circular economy of materials in shipping and ship breaking. Biodiversity and protecting biodiversity absolutely should be a priority for shipping. There's been a lot of regulations recently in terms of shipping and CO2 reduction, which is crucial. And biodiversity, it needs to be raised higher up on the agenda. About 70% of invasive species have come from the hull of a vessel. It's like many things in sustainability, you need to value things properly. If you don't value them, you can't really put a price on them. Many people just see it as a cost, whereas we see it not as a cost, but we see it more as a risk mitigation and resilience of your supply chains. We need to look at shipping from cradle to grave. Innovation and design for the future is essential. We need to invest now in ways that will deliver for companies, society and the planet in the long term.